Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Matt Jarbo. Welcome to Three Buck Theater, and this is the aftermath for Aladdin, the live-action Disney remake that many of you thought was going to crash and burn, considering the very first time we saw the genie, it was god-awful. It was terrible, and Disney made up for that by quickly releasing the Frozen 2 teaser a couple days later to divert the conversation, which did show me at the time that they had very little faith in the Guy Ritchie film, and that they were like, crap, we're opening it up on Memorial Day a year after Solo bombed. Uh... Oh no! But let's take a look here at actually how much the movie did, because it, it actually did better than expected this Memorial Day weekend. So coming over to boxofficemojo.com, we can see that the domestic total as of May 27, 2019 is $112 million, which is pretty damn good for the four-day weekend. This is what they're estimating for the four-day weekend, not the three-day. It has an estimated budget of $183 million. So when you look at that number for $112 million and you put it up against $183, it's not that bad considering when you look at the worldwide gross of $233 million uh, over the span of these couple days. So clearly the movie is on track to earn back its production budget and marketing costs and probably end up turning a profit for Disney, specifically when they've touted it as being one of the films coming to Disney Plus in the later months. And so I've been kind of curious to see what the uh, what the cinema score is, what people are saying about the movie. And you know what? They're actually pretty happy with it, giving it an A cinema score. And this is one that I think a lot of people probably thought wasn't going to happen again, coming off of the look of the genie and the criticism against the song uh, that we saw the clip for, uh, you know, the Prince Ali song and everything else, they would have probably turned on the film, but audiences turned up for it this weekend and really seemed to enjoy it. And uh, coming over here, even to Metacritic, um, we can see that while the audience might have enjoyed it, the critics over here did not, giving it a 54% and even putting it up against uh, Brightburn, which opened this weekend, that that's still not much higher than Brightburn, but then that like Metacritic is Metacritic and Metacritic exists. But the real thing people look at here is obviously Rotten Tomatoes, which looking at the critical consensus here, Aladdin retells his classic source material story with sufficient spectacle and skill, even if it never approaches the dazzling splendor of the animated original with a 58% tomato meter based off 266 reviews but a verified audience score of 94%. And the thing to consider here is this is off of 13,204 verified ratings. What that essentially means is that if you don't know, uh, Rotten Tomatoes changed up their whole thing this week, where now in order to verify, to, to put a rating in the system that actually counts towards the score, you have to have purchased the tickets through Fandango itself and be verified in order to make it work. And this is simply because there was a lot of trolls that attacked it. And it's unfortunate that this is where it went. But even right now, AMC, Regal, Cinemark, and all the others don't have the ability to count towards that particular score, which does kind of feel like if there are accusations of Disney purchasing their own tickets in order to then run up the audience score, you know, that's 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 an accusation we're going to hear a lot of uh, going forward, especially when it comes to Rotten Tomato numbers. But the cinema score is something that they are asked of people as they are exiting the theater, which is something that is entirely independent of Rotten Tomatoes. And that does seem to be indicating that the movie has done very, very, very well. But then the question becomes, what are the critics saying about it? Well, coming over here, we see that Anthony Lane from The New Yorker with a rotten review here says, in short, it's a whole old world which tells me quite a bit about it. And just in the fact that it's just the remakes, people don't, people aren't giant fans of the remakes, but the critics aren't at least the, the audience does really seem to eat them up. But anyway, Richard Roper here with a positive review saying Marwan Kenzari snarls it up as the villainous Jafar, while Nassim Pedrad is endearing and funny as Jasmine's uh, handmaiden and best friend Dahlia, giving it three out of four stars. And focusing again on two things that were not really heavily talked about going into this film, Jafar, while meant to be the villain, looked to me specifically as just being kind of weak and feckless, not the intimidating, you know, advisor that he was in the original animated movie. This guy, I don't know, but apparently he's quite good. And then the new handmaiden and best friend is a whole new character uh, that they made for the film. So Richard Roper seems really like her. But Matthew Lacona here from San Diego Reader with a rotten review says efforts were made, whether through good faith or just market savvy, to update Princess Jasmine into a people's champion who might prefer ruling to romance. Enough to make you wish the Disney people had gone a whole hog and just called it Jasmine. And that is an interesting take on 
uh, the film. That's an interesting take on the story. The fact that they uh, that they want to do that, the that they did do a lot to Jasmine to update her character, from what I've been hearing, and as a result of that, it could you know have a negative impact. It did with Matthew uh, Lacona here, but anyway, Ty Burr. Uh, from Boston Globe here says, with Aladdin, they've done the leveling with just enough style and pizzazz that most moviegoers won't care that it's a retread and the leads are good enough to make you hope they'll go on to something real, which is, I think, about as positive as you could probably ask for uh, in regards to Aladdin. It's like, hey, look, it's a live action remake. You hope that the actors are using this as a stepping stone to something better. Uh, I personally like Naomi Scott uh, as, as Kimberly in uh, the Mighty Moon from Power Rangers movie from two years ago. We'd we'll love to see a sequel to that one. Doubt we will, but hey, give her give her some more work. Um, and the guy playing Aladdin um, looks pretty good too. And, you know, apparently he is quite good. So th then the question becomes, what does the audience say about this? Well, according to uh, Rotten Tomatoes here, Gia, with a verified five-star review, says the ending was not like the old one, but it was magic in our eyes. That's good. Uh, Laura Lee V, with five stars non-reviewed, uh, verified, says, wow, what a masterpiece. So well done and definitely worth going to see. One of my new favorite movies. I never go to the theaters and I'm going back this weekend to watch it in IMAX or 3D. Will Smith was phenomenal in his reprisal of the late legend Robin Williams' genie role. The two main leans were so good. I love the traditional yet modern dancing and respect to the culture throughout the entire film. Awesome twist at the end, too. Do not listen to critics as they are pretentious negative Nancys. This film is excellent and keeps up with the animated original as humanly possible. Seriously, a film that can only be so spectacular, you have to appreciate the effort, hard work, and care that every single person put into this project. Wow. And then Ollie here with another verified review. I think it was a really sweet movie. Very wholesome. So we can see that just this is what you know audiences are seeing by just going to that page on Rotten Tomatoes that they're going to be getting inundated with a lot of these types of responses. And a couple verified are saying that it was good. The Laura Lee one, I'm not going to lie, comes across a little bit like uh, a little bit over the top, right? It was the greatest movie of all time. You know, I'm not being paid to say this. No, I don't know. I have no idea. But then the question at the end of it all does become, is this movie a Memorial Day success, a Memorial Day weekend success based upon Solo last year kind of crashing and burning? And a lot of people chalked it up to also Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, I think was it the last one, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Was that the last one or was it on Stranger Tides? I forget at this point. But the one that came out the year before it also kind of had about a similar opening, but was still viewed negatively and crashed and burned. Well, the matter, the fact of the matter is this, the four day weekend totals for this movie is $112 million, whereas Solo was, I believe, around $103 to $104 million is what uh, Solo pulled in last year. And people are looking at that minor, minor, minor few million gap and they say, oh, well, this is a success and solo was a failure. It's a very weird way to look at the whole system. I mean, that's a very marginal difference when all is said and done. Is Aladdin going to go on to gross over $400 million worldwide? The answer to that is probably yes, but it is going up against a couple big name movies in June, as well as leading into July and, and, and the rest of the summer season. Will it have the legs to, to stay afloat for quite some time or to stay up on that magic carpet ride for, for, for a while? And the truth of that is going to come in the following weeks, but it probably won't. They had a big opening on Memorial Day weekend, but they crammed so many movies into the into the summer season. Now we had three movies open up this weekend, all vying for the top spot. Granted, it was only really going to be one. Even John Wick Chapter Three, which opened high last weekend, had a seventy one or seventy three percent drop this weekend. So one of the highest, you know, the highest opening for a John Wick franchise, but but the lowest, the, the highest drop of 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 a lot of movies. And that is just the nature of the beast. It's it's get it out week to week to week to week to week, and it ends up screwing over a lot of films. Spread it out, spread it out. And everyone can do a lot better. But I think at the end of the day, Aladdin is a better movie than people expected it to be based upon the original marketing. And that nostalgia did in fact play a very, very, very high part in this, a very, very big part of people going to see this film in theaters. Will Smith was a spectacle. I think he was also something people were curious about seeing, considering that people really talked about him a lot and his performance in the movie above all others. And no one's really talking about Guy Ritchie having directed it, which is perfectly fine. He probably wants to just get a good one, a, a win under his belt because the last few films he's made with Warner Brothers has not done very well. And of course, I'm referring to King Arthur and the man from uncle. So you know, everyone wants to see Will Smith as the genie. And I think that's the big draw. And I think that with Will Smith still kind of being Will Smith is what's going to bring a lot of people in. Anyway, 
Those are just my thoughts while looking at the aftermath of Aladdin. I am curious to know what you guys think. Did you see it? Did you like it? Let me know down in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic day and peace out. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. But if you really want to help the channel, be sure to check out patreon.com forward slash Matt Jarbo. There's uh, three buck theater perks. A lot's going to be going on with that, as well as the Facebook group, which is going to be only growing as time goes on. Anyway, thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.